Yes. Okay. Hello, Nirmala, ma'am. Welcome to NJ Vlogs interview section. So, uh, what is counselor job and how is it stressful? <laughs> Okay, a counselor is basically a person who uh, helps you to help yourself. Okay, a counselor, uh, there's a usual myth that a counselor kind of advises you, but a counselor does not do that. Okay, so what we do is, uh, if you come to us with a problem, we sit with you, we talk with you, and we help you to find your own solution. Okay, and if it is stressful, it can get stressful at times. Okay, when there are a lot of people talking to you and they come to you with their own problems, with their own stresses. So it can be a little stressful, but uh, that is why it is important to have, you know, um, uh, have it all scheduled. Okay, so that is why we prefer appointments so that it doesn't take a toll on us. From which place are you actually? Are you basically a Malayali? Yes, I'm a Malayali, uh, uh, but born and brought up in Mumbai. So my house, my family all are back in Mumbai. Even my aunt is also. Yeah, where in Mumbai? Pune. Oh, okay. okay. What all are your qualifications? Mm, I've done my uh, bachelor's in uh, sociology from Mumbai. And I did my uh, master's in uh, social work from uh, Manipal. Karnataka. What all are the common complaints you get from students and parents? Okay. Um, I wouldn't call them complaints as such. Okay. So they, they have certain issues. There are certain uh, things that they are trying to deal with. So then I wouldn't uh, actually call them complaints. Uh, but uh, usually students come uh, for uh, different reasons. So it could be uh, stress. It could be anxiety. Um, depression at times, uh, family problems, um, problems with their friends, um, even uh, academic related problems. That are, those are usually the things uh, students come for. And uh, parents usually approach me when their child is not uh, performing well academically uh, or when they have some you know, uh, behavior related uh, issues. Okay. Uh, are you satisfied with your counselor job in our school and is that giving you happiness or stress in, in to your mind it is very very uh, satisfying okay we have a very good uh, working environment at scholars and we have a uh, in we have an incredible uh, bunch of students like you so it is very good it is not at all stressful it is uh, quite uh, satisfying what all are the negative things that you feel in you? Okay, things uh, that are uh, that I wish to improve in myself is one thing. Um, I find it really tough to uh, say no to people. Okay, so even if I want don't want to do something, um, just uh, thinking about how it might hurt the hurt hurt the other person I usually tend to say yes to it even if I don't agree with it. so that is one thing so uh, sometimes uh, even uh, when I am in my cabin uh, when I have a free period and uh, I am actually doing some work but if a student comes and uh, asks me ma'am can I talk to you I usually don't say no because maybe that person is going through something so I just let that person come in even if I have some other work to do so that is one thing that I'm trying to improve in myself and um, one more thing is that uh, I like my things planned. So I'm not very spontaneous. No? So that is also one thing that I want to change in myself. And what is the best thing you like? Okay. Best thing you like as in something that gives me happiness? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that would be uh, spending time with people uh, that I love, people who are close to me, and also having some good food. Has something made you cry or unhappy or stressful? I'm asking this because every counselor has a smile, and people mm -hmm. usually say that everybody has up and down in their life. So that's of course, absolutely. Uh, every person uh, does have 
negative emotions within themselves. So um, anger, sadness, all these things are very common. So as you rightly said, uh, counselors are usually people who put on a pleasant and happy face, but we also have our own problems. Um, so with experience, you know, uh, in our profession, we learn some strategies to manage our emotions. But I am. I still have a long way to go. So I do get angry. I do get upset. And people who are close to me, they bear the brunt of it usually. Okay. Are you satisfied with what you have, or do you think you have more to achieve in your life? Um. I am happy and content with what I have achieved already, but uh, yes, I am. Uh, I have certain ambitions in life. I want to do some things of of my own. Uh, so, yeah, I I think one of the things would be to start something on my own to have my own organization, probably. So yes, I do have some things in mind. In uh, I think everybody should keep in their mind that. Uh, like, um, don't if you get a negative reply for a from a person, don't get me. So, what is your uh, suggestion in that? Okay, so you are basically saying that uh, uh, you know negative uh, comments come through your way. I mean, as you progress, um, there'll be people who say mean things to you or discourage you from doing certain things, but you still have to move ahead. Right, that's what that's that's what you said, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Very, very true. Yes. Okay. What is the thing that makes you satisfy or make you happy always? Um, okay, so that is related to one of the questions you you asked before. So again, uh, spending time with people who are close to me, especially my uh, family, uh, my friends, this is what makes me happy. Things you don't like to do or a thing that you are scared of? I am very scared of animals. So I don't like being around animals. Yeah, I, I don't dislike them. I don't uh, hate them. But I'm very scared because I just can't predict what they're going to do next. Whom do you prefer as your best companion? I think that would be my husband. Do you think that e-learning is better or the normal school is better? What do you think? <laughs> Both. Both? Both has uh, pros and cons. But personally, if you ask me, I think um, school regular classes are being missed equally by students and uh, teachers. Because the kind of um, attention, uh, the kind of care uh, and kind of love you get in uh, regular classes is very different from that of online classes. And you know that, right? You miss your teachers, you miss the interactions you have with your teacher, with your friends. So any day, regular classes. Okay. Do you think uh, teachers have to give activities that have to be done in hand or on their systems, okay. except languages. So, ex okay, so uh, you mean activity um, activities as in assignments and tests and everything, right? right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, uh, both has its you know uh, as I said before, both has pros and cons in it. And now um. When you do it on your system, it is very uh, beneficial for students who have uh, writing related difficulties, who find it uh, difficult to write. Uh, sometimes uh, they make a lot of spelling mistakes. Some some students, uh, you know, uh, their uh, hand pains while writing. So such kind of students find will find it very useful uh, when uh, assignments and everything, notes, etc., are typed. It's much better. But also, it's important to build your, you know, writing skills. So that can only be done when you actually write. So um, I think there should be a balance of both. And also, uh, when you're typing on system, that means you're spending a lot more time 
or in front of a screen, which actually can have negative effects later. So it can be a mix of both. In some countries, in e-learning, they type their notes in their devices. So do you think it should be implemented in our school also? Okay, so relating to uh, the earlier question, uh, so it can be a mix of both. So as much as I think that it would be really beneficial for some students who have actual genuine difficulties, but also it is important that you write to build that skill of yours, to build uh, fine motor skills. So it should be, we should actually maintain a balance between the two. Okay. Uh, it was your it was your decision or your parents' decision to go and learn all of those degrees. Absolutely, my decision. Okay. My parents actually did have some plans for me. They wanted me to get into medicine and pursue that, uh, but never even once they forced me to do it. They were totally supportive of what I wanted to do in my life. Do you think uh, parents forcing children to go for different courses is good or bad? Absolutely not. Okay, so um, see, it is quite uh, natural for students to be confused at that age, okay, you, especially after 10th, when, and now there are a lot of options. So it's all the more difficult to choose one course or one specialization. So parents can guide them, but not choose for them. They can help them to take a decision, but not make the decision for the children. Okay. Uh, could you please say a message to children, uh, those who are cheating while e-learning? Okay, the chances for cheating is actually quite uh, higher when uh, it's e-learning. Uh, but um, see, when you are cheating, uh, on your exam that means you're cheating yourself okay you're not cheating your teacher but you're cheating yourself so it's okay to make mistakes okay nobody is perfect nobody knows everything in this world but uh, you should have the courage to you know uh, to know where you're going wrong and correct those it's okay if you get less marks in your exams but at the end of the day when you're sleeping you'll at least uh, be proud to tell yourself that, okay, so I was an honest person today. That is what I want to tell people who want to cheat. Could you please talk about exam stress and exam preparation? Okay. Uh, stress is uh, something quite natural. Okay, everybody gets stressed. Uh, and uh, stress is not necessarily bad. Okay. So uh, when you're stressed, you are extra careful. Mm -hmm. uh, when, you're, when you're anxious about certain things, when you're tensed about certain things, you tend to be more careful. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, when you cross the road, okay, when you are tensed about it, you're anxious about it, and that is why you see if there's a vehicle coming. Right? So it helps you to be prepared for a certain thing. So if you're stressed about your exam, good. That means you'll take the exam seriously. So it's a good thing. But when it gets out of control uh, and it, uh, it does not help you to study, that is when it becomes a problem. So for that, uh, what you have to do is first thing, you might be stressed because you're not prepared for the exam. Okay, so first thing is you have to prepare for your exam well. You have to make, uh, you know, your own notes um, and uh, have targets, have goals and put up that target somewhere where it's visible. So for example, uh, you have your exams coming up, right? In, in two weeks. So uh, you can uh, make a target for uh, the next one week, okay? And put it up on your study board saying that, okay, so science, I'm going to finish this much portion. Max, I'm going to finish so much portion for the week. Okay, and you put it up somewhere so that you see every day and you work towards that goal. Okay, and uh, that is one thing. Uh, second thing, as I said, make your own notes. So don't rely on the notes that are given by the teachers, but you have to make your own notes summarizing what's there in your notebook. So that just before the exam, you don't have to go through the whole 
um, two, three pages that your teacher has given you. So you make your own summary, little, little notes, little charts and all of that, you know, all your own drawings and everything will help you to understand uh, the material better. So make your own notes. And um, what else can we do? Yeah, okay, so if you're stressed, I'm so sorry, this keeps going out. Um, now another thing that you can do is, um, many children come to me saying that, uh, ma'am, I was prepared for the exam, but uh, during the exam, I tend, I tend to, uh, you know, kind of blank out. I study, but I don't know what happened, but just everything just went away. So that means you're getting exam anxiety. Okay, so for that, you have to uh, sort of calm yourself. So when this happens, it kind of, your your uh, you know negative thoughts kind of take over your situation. So uh, these thoughts keep on telling you that uh, no, you can't do it. Uh, I don't think uh, you're capable of doing this, or uh, mm, you're not studied enough. Uh, the questions that will come will be out of syllabus, and you won't be able to write uh, the uh, paper well. These kind of negative thoughts. So you have to tell yourself. Okay, so this is not actually reality. It is just the thoughts telling you certain things and wanting to believe those things. But it's actually not true. You have to keep on reminding yourself that. And another thing is to concentrate and focus on your breathing instead of those negative thoughts. So we have certain uh, breathing techniques that we use. So one of those uh, techniques is uh, called the 4, 6, 8 breathing technique. I have told some of our uh, school students also this. So uh, when you get anxious during the exam time, you can try this out. Okay, so it uh, goes like this. So at the count of four, you breathe in. You hold it in for a count of six. And then you exhale at the count of eight. So it's called four, six, and eight technique. So when you do this, it kind of redirects your thinking and focus to this than your negative thoughts. So you can do this on a daily basis if you think that you get stressed out really easily. Uh, and also just before you examine, before you get your paper, you can just close your eyes and in the examination hall, you, know, you kind of do that. So that is important uh, to do. And uh, exam preparation related, what else can we say? Uh, make a timetable. Okay, uh, before your exam, make a timetable uh, to plan how much you're going to study and which subject you're going to study. Uh, give more weightage to the subjects which are difficult for you. Um, do things that you love, even during exam time. Don't sacrifice on that. Okay, so it's important that you have a balance between uh, studies and extracurricular activities. And then also, yeah, uh, focus on your diet. Eat good food during exams have a uh, good sleep, that's important. So, uh, so many parents pressurize their kids on, like when the exam is near, the uh, parents pressurize them. So what is your opinion on that? See, um, I, of course it's wrong, uh, but um, parents, you know, uh, they have certain expectations for their child. And sometimes these expectations are not matching with the abilities of the child. That is when it's a problem. Okay, So they think that the child should get, uh, say, 90% in their exam. And the child is generally not capable of that. The child can only read 60%. And now, nowadays, it's not mandatory that you need to have a good score to you know, succeed in life. Things are changing. Earlier it used to be like that, but now lot of, uh, there are a lot of career options. There's a lot of scope for other things. So uh, I think uh, parents are also gradually uh, realizing this. As I said uh, before, also the main reason why parents usually come to me are for academic related uh, issues. They say that, you know, my child is not performing uh, well in st uh, studies. I don't know what is the problem. Uh, I don't know why he's not interested in studies. So I tend, I, that, that is one thing that I keep reminding the parents that it's okay, you know, if the child is not interested uh, in this, it's important to pass, okay, because only if you pass your schooling, 
uh, you can uh, further go uh, you know deeper into things that you actually like so um so if they are getting passing grades i think that is fine and encourage them to do things uh, that they are actually good at because that is what they're going to pursue further so it's important to motivate them so thank you for coming ma'am you're welcome so bye 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 and take care okay thank and all the best for your exams thank you ma'am bye bye ma'am bye so thank you for watching this interview session with mrs nirmala ma'am so i have to say one big sorry to you because on friday i wasn't able to upload a vlog and i have promised you that every month second and fourth week at tuesdays at 8 pm new interview videos will be there so sorry for that i wasn't able to do that because i wasn't so well so very so for, sorry for that and for not uploading friday vlog also so today there won't be any vlog it will be only this interview video from next week onwards it will be regular as before so thank you for watching till the next video bye bye, bye.